Have you ever felt just a bit strange about starting a new job, wondered if maybe you didn't quite fit in? This evening's story is about someone who learns that finding out the truth may be more unnerving than staying in the dark. It's called The Dentist. It was written by Vancouver writer Bill Gray. So sit down, relax. We've made an appointment for you, one you won't forget. All right, there you are, Mr. Rogers. The dentist will be in in a minute. He's just finishing up in the other room. Thank you. Oh, uh, whoa. Will this take long? <laughs> oh, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and don't be so nervous. Dr. Stewart is very good. You won't feel a thing. He's the most popular dentist in town for a reason, you know. Yeah, and the cheapest. Hope that doesn't mean he's going... Well, no. Rogers, isn't it? George Rogers... Let's see. Ah, yes, the fourth cuspid. It's quite a cavity you've got yourself there, right along the edge of the tooth. You've been a little lax with the flossing. Well, it's... <laughs> I always seem to forget. But I did try. My last dentist Well, said... don't you worry about it. I'll be able to fix this up in no time. Have you had gas before? Oh, yeah. I... Well, this seems silly, I guess. But I don't want you to do it without it. Oh, fine, fine. No problem. I prefer using it. All right, Mr. Rogers. And just let me get this over your nose. Aren't you going to freeze me first? Oh, that won't be necessary. Hey, wait a minute. What's happening? That's not... This doesn't feel like the gas I've had before. What are you... What, what, are, you, what are you doing? Can't see right. That's it, Mr. Rogers. That's it. Sleep. I want to be awake for this anyway. Donna, is everything set up? This one's ready. Could you pass me the toothpaste, hun? Uh, yeah. When I finish school, we'll live in a house with four bathrooms, all big. Mark of a successful lawyer is how many bathrooms you have. I think a mansion is still a few years away. Oh, I'll climb the corporate ladder like a greased cat with a malamute on its tail. Fine. But right now I need to get finished here or I'll be late for my first day in my new job. And you'll run the risk of starvation before graduation. Oh, it's only six o'clock in the morning. What time do you start? I told you, 7.30. But I want to be early on the first day in case the joint. Being a dental assistant isn't only following orders, you know. They all have their quirks and office politics. Mm. Excuse me. Yeah. This guy Stewart seems pretty good, though. Real no-nonsense operation, from what I could tell at the interview. But friendly, too. Well, I still don't see why he has to rise with the roosters. He keeps up his volume. I guess that's how he keeps his rates so low. Good morning, Dr. Stewart's office. Yes, just a moment, please. Let's see now, Tuesday the 5th. Yes, he has an opening at 5. All right, that's Mr. Semenak. Fine, we'll put you down for 5 on Tuesday then. Pardon? Oh, yes, those are the correct rates. Dr. Stewart is a big believer in inexpensive dental care. Okay, fine. Bye. She's finally off the phone. This is Evelyn, our receptionist. Front office gal. Dr. Stewart's girl Friday. You name it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ev, this is Sandra, the new DA. Oh, pleased to meet you, Sandra. Nice to meet you. I'm sure you'll enjoy working here, Sandra. Alan, Dr. Stewart, he runs a close unit. Like a family. I'm sure you'll fit in just fine. <laughs> and if you need anything at all, just let me know and I'll do whatever I can to help you out. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Duty calls... Dr. Stewart's office. Good morning. <laughs> Evelyn's mm. the greatest. This place couldn't mm -hmm. run without her. She seems very nice. Oh, she is. Mm -hmm. Give you the shirt off her back. She's been with Dr. Stewart for years. Yeah. Really keeps yeah, the place fine. on track. Now, let's go to the doctor's office and you can meet your new boss again. 
There. That takes care of the tooth. As far as this little lady will know, she's had a filling, and that's the end of it. The rest is virtually untraceable. As usual. You're very talented, Alan, in more ways than one. You're very flattering, my dear. All right. I'll put this in the safe, and you get this equipment out of here. Can't have our new girl seeing any of this. Not yet, anyway. Do you think she'll work out? Promising. From the interview, she seemed clever enough and ambitious. That's what we need. And quite pretty. Don't worry, my love. Your position is secure. I hope she's more understanding than the last one. Yes, so do I. That was unfortunate. Fine, then, Mr. Rogers. We'll see you in a few days. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, when do I come back in again? Evelyn, I wonder if you could tell me what the situation is. Oh, excuse me. That's fine. Mr. Rogers was just leaving. Uh, when do I come back? I told you, Mr. Rogers, in a few days. I'll call you and remind you. Oh, I see. Fine. Yeah. Fine. What's with him? Uh, him? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. He just has an adverse reaction to the gas, but he won't have any work done unless we give it to him. Will he be all right? Oh, heaven, yes. He just sounds a little groggy is all. Nothing wrong with him. You wanted something? Oh, yes. Uh, there's a McQueen, Denise McQueen, in with Donna and Dr. Stewart in the yellow room right now. I can't seem to find her file. What do you want with her file? Well, I've been here a week now, and I seem to have the routine pretty well worked out, so I thought I'd familiarize myself with some of the patient's files. I don't think you need to concern yourself with all of the patients. But I thought... I think you'd do well to keep busy with those you're assigned. But where I work before... Well, you work here now, and we have our own ways of doing things. You will have your patients. Donna will have hers. But why would a patient's file be missing? The files are in the room with the patient. No, they're not. You see, that's what made me Miss Logan, why... it's none of your concern. But, uh... But Dr. Stewart has taken on some special patients. People who can't afford even his low rates, but people who need work done. So he pretends they've never been here. He keeps no record of them. But how would he know what work still needed to be done? He, uh, he, he has an excellent memory. I, I don't know. I don't feel it's my place to question his methods, nor yours. I, I'm sorry. I was just curious. I didn't mean to pry. Well, don't worry. There's always a simple explanation for things. Alan simply doesn't like to broadcast his charitable acts. I'll tell you what. If you just forget all about this, I won't mention anything to the doctor. Well, sure, but I don't... I'm sure you'll fit in here fine, Sandra, once you get the hang of how things work. Yeah, right. So I guess I better get back to work. Who's next? Uh, Doncaster, Alex B. He's out in the waiting room now. Fine. I'll take him in. Good. See you later. Yeah. Dr. Stewart? Yes, Ed? Are you? I'm alone. The patient has gone. Alan, you're going to have to watch out for that new girl. She's already asking some tricky questions. What do you mean? She's been snooping around the files. Alan, you're going to have to do something about her. One way or another. And soon. Yeah, more wine. No, thanks, Jeremy. Well, I suppose I'll simply have to take it upon myself to drain the dregs of this noble bottle. Well? Mm, well, what? Well, what do you think about what I told you? About the office? Mm, I don't know, Sam. There doesn't seem to be any problem that I can make out, unless you don't believe what you were told. I'm not sure I do. There's something funny, Jeremy. I know there is. Whoever heard of a dentist not keeping files? They thrive on them. You said he was a friendly sort? I know, but... Well, what about that spaced-out guy, Rogers? I've seen lots of people after nitrous oxide, and none of them ever looked like that. He was really out of it. How old was he? About late 20s, I guess. Yeah, maybe he was stoned on something. Well, then why did Evelyn try to cover it up? She would know people don't come out of gas that way. I don't know, Sam. I'm going to be a lawyer, not a detective. Uh, maybe your steward uses a different kind of gas, something you're not familiar with. Maybe 
Maybe the guy was sick. What are you getting at? I think something's going on over there. I don't know what exactly, but something isn't right. The second day I was there, last Tuesday, I overheard something that didn't seem to make any sense at the time, but now I wonder. Sandra Slade, dental detective. Send us your enamel scrapings Jeremy, and we'll... will you lay off? I'm serious. All right, all right. Well, what new evidence does your eavesdropping bring to light? Jeremy, that was accidental. Anyway, Stuart had been with this patient for quite a while that morning. I remember because we got really backed up. I was in the waiting room talking with one of the other patients when I saw the woman leaving. So I went to reception to see if it was okay to bring in the next patient. The door was open a bit, and before I could walk in, I heard Stuart and Donna talking with Evelyn. Stuart was saying that they could use that one only one more time. Something about how they'd better not go any further with her. She'd never last. And then Donna said she wanted to remind them both not to let Sandra, me, mm. see her when she came in the next week. What do you mean about using her? I don't know. At the time, I thought it was something I hadn't heard properly, but now I'm not so sure. You see, when I saw that woman leave, she looked really strange. I didn't think anything of it at the time. There are lots of strange people in the world, right? But now... Well, now I think she sure looked a lot like Mr. Rogers did today. Sometimes things can fall into place when you want them to. No, no, there's something going on. Well, why don't you confront them with all this? Match clues and see who comes up with the strangest story. Jeremy, I do have a plan. I get the feeling a lot of files aren't where they should be. More welfare cases, I guess. So, remember that filling you're supposed to have redone and should have had taken care of a year ago? Oh, no. Oh, no, my little Poiret. Solve your own mysteries. Jeremy, if you don't have it done soon, you'll lose the tooth. Well, it'll cuten up my boyish features. Sand, I hate dentists. All I can handle is one dental assistant. Speaking of which, why don't we forget all this nonsense and retire to the boudoir? We have other mysteries we can work on. This is not nonsense. I want to get to the bottom of this, and you're going to help me. Innocent people might be getting hurt. I don't see what I could do anyway. I know beans about dentistry. It doesn't matter. All we have to do is get you in there and looking around. They don't know I'm married. Oh, I embarrass you? Oh, hardly. I just didn't think my marital status was any employer's business. They think I'm single and unattached. Maybe the good dentist is putting the rush on you and in your own sweet, naive For way. For God's sake. We could drum up a story and get you in as one of the charity cases. Seriously, Sandra drills and clamps and things at the best of times. I'll make sure I assist. That way you'll be safe. And what if we don't find out anything? Well, you'll save your tooth and I'll have to come up with a new plan. And if I don't agree? That'll be two mysteries we don't work on. Well, there's no doubt about it, Mr. Jones. That filling must be replaced. Uh, do it right away, if you like. Save you coming back. Oh, sure. Uh, fine. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'll be right back. Uh, Sandra, you can get things ready. Yes, doctor. Well, Jeremy? Well, what? Seems creepy around here, doesn't it? Oh, you mean because the doctor has a hump back and stitches around his neck? Oh. Come on, Sandra. He seems like a really nice guy. It's an act. Come on. Just before I brought you in, I saw Donna and Stuart whispering to each other. And when they saw me, they stopped. Oh, for God's sake, what are you expecting? A bogeyman with a drill? Just just what is it you expect to happen here? I don't know for I sure. I mean, but... I'm the one who should be worried. I'm terrified of dentists. You know that. You wouldn't believe the things that go through my mind when I even look at some of those shiny things you're flinging around there. Jeremy, I think he's conducting some kind of experiments on some of the patients. Well, then let him go ahead feel more relaxed than I've ever felt on a visit to the dentist. Seems like a good experiment to me. You don't understand. There have been a lot of people who... So, how are we doing? Everything ready, Sandra? And you all set, Jeremy? Everything's ready to go, Doctor. Uh, Jeremy, would mm. you like some gas to make it all a little easier? Well, I suppose. Although I feel less tense than normal, I must say. He doesn't need any gas. Well, a little won't hurt. Take the mind off things. I talk to him. He doesn't need it. Well, I don't mind. No! Uh, Sandra, what's the matter? I don't want you it's to give him... It's all right. There's... Please don't do Sandra, it. Sandra, if you don't mind... <laughs> What, what, what was that? I, I don't know. My I... hands are full. Go and see what's happened, for God's well, it sake. It startled me. I... Go and see if everyone's all right. All right, all right. It, it sounded like glass or, or something. I'll be right back. 
Now, Mr. Jones, you just take another good whiff of this. Hey, wait a min, min minute. What's going on? I can't... Good, good. Now, I guess we might as well get the cavity out of the way before we get down to some real business. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Evelyn. Evelyn, what happened? Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. It have scared me to death. I, I was working on the books there, and I guess I was lost in what I was doing, and, and I, I don't know, I somehow managed to knock that vase onto the floor. It scared me half to death. Lord, Dr. Stewart will be is just furious. Right here? Is... What happened? Uh, oh, some broken glass. Oh, dear. You go ahead and finish helping Ev, Sandra. I'm free. I'll uh, take over with the Jones man. No, wait, don't. I'll do that. I must... Help! Now, you, you don't just understand. give me a hand here. Can't have broken glass all over for people to step on, can we? J- Mr. Jones shouldn't have gas. I He's... am sorry I frightened everyone like that. I've always been like that, you know. Completely go to pieces when I'm startled. <laughs> Seems silly, but when I get concentrating... Here, you take these pieces out for the garbage chute, and I'll make sure we don't have any little chips. Jeremy? Jeremy, are you all right? Yes. Well? Yes. Well, what happened, for God's sake? What happened? At the dentist. Oh, yeah, nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Are you all right? I told you, I'm fine. The doctor fixed my tooth. I'll go back uh, next week for more work. He found some other cavities. He's doing it for free. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But what happened when Donna came in? They locked me out, you know, and they slipped you out of there when I was busy. What happened? Sandra, you're being paranoid. Dr. Stewart fixed my cavity, that's all. He's an excellent dentist. God, Jeremy, you can be so infuriating. I know something's not right around here. I know I that... you're wrong. Look, forget about your mystery, Sam. Well, I'm still not sure about... Oh, I've got to go. Evelyn's just coming back from lunch, and I'm using the office phone. See you tonight. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, hello, Sandra. I have a nice lunch? Oh, excellent, of course. Dr. Stewart always picks a nice spot when he takes me for lunch. The guardrail down on West 4th. Do you know it? No, I I don't think so. Very good. If a little expensive. I had a lovely shrimp and artichoke salad. Sounds nice. Well, I guess I'd better get back to it. Oh, Sandra, the doctor would like to see you for a moment in his office. Yes? Come in. Evelyn said you wanted to see me? Yes, come in, come in. Have you spoken with your acquaintance, Mr. Jones? No. I I barely know him, really. He's someone I just ran into at a party. Uh, Well, he'll be back. Needed a little more work done. Oh, good. You seem to be taking quite an interest in our little operation, Sandra. Evelyn and Donna tell me you're quite the busy one, no detail too small and all that. Uh, Oh, as I said in my interview, I don't like to waste time. Well, you certainly haven't been. You probably know more about what goes on around here than I do. I was only trying to be helpful, Doctor. I didn't mean to upset anyone. Upset? Oh, you haven't upset anyone. Much the opposite. But I must make a confession, Sandra. We've been watching you closely, I might say. I was afraid of that. Well, what did you expect? We had to be sure. And I have to say, I think my first impressions were correct. Your what? I think you'll fit into this organization extremely well. And as a vote of confidence from us all, I'd like to increase your salary by 30%, if you have no objections. 30%? Well, no, of course, that's fine. But I thought... No, it won't all be gravy. You'll have to work for it. I'd like you to take on more of the business around here. Learn all the nooks and crannies. Evelyn's going to need a bit of help, and Donna takes her holidays soon. And I'd like you to take on her patients for a while as well. Uh, think you can handle it? Yes, of course. I- I've asked Evelyn to leave me some time Monday morning. She and you and I can go through all the files, fill in any gaps you may have in the daily operation, all right? Yes, fine. I... Dr. Stewart? Uh, yes, Dr. Stewart, I'm... 
I'm grateful for the opportunity. And I'm sorry if I've seemed a little too curious. Oh, not at all. You've shown an encouraging ambition. I like that. You'll be a valuable member of the team. Thank you. Oh, and Sandra, everyone here gets free dental care, of course. I've asked Evelyn to schedule you for a check before our meeting on Monday. We must present a good impression to our patients, mustn't we? Yes, of course. Monday, then. Right. Monday. Everything is fine except for that one filling. Get that redone and you'll have a perfect mouthful of beautiful chompers. I had that one done the last place I worked. Not his fault. Just one of those things cavities started up under it. Mm. Morning, everyone. Oh, Donna, you're early. Say, would you mind assisting? Sandra needs a replacement. May as well get it over with right now. Okay with you, Sandra? Sure. Why not? Give me a second. I'll be ready. Uh, Make sure the gas is hooked up, Donna. No point in making Sandra uncomfortable. Oh, I don't really like gas. You see... Oh, we'll just give you a quick shot to relax you. All right. Before we start, though, Sandra, I have a question, a a curiosity you might be able to help me with. Yes? That Mr. Jones you brought in on Friday, the student who couldn't afford to pay? Yes. How well do you know him? Not well at all. We met at a party. Well, you know, that's very interesting, Sandra. You see, you called him Mr. Jones, but he told me his name was Logan, Jeremy Logan. He did? Now, why do you suppose he said that? I I don't know. He said he was a law student and that he was married. Well, as I said, I I don't really know him. I never met his wife. That's interesting, too, Miss Logan. You see, he said you were his wife. Well, well, I'm sorry, Doctor. You see, I thought something was funny around here. I was trying to find out what... To find out what? Jeremy said you thought we were experimenting. Well, sometimes I have this crazy imagination. I'm sorry, I really am. Oh, no need to apologize, Mrs. Logan. No need. You see, you were quite right. I was? Indeed, we are carrying on experiments, and I think you'll be valuable in assisting us with them. Ready when you are, Alan. Now, wait a minute. You can bring the machine in now, Donna. Mm-hmm. I didn't mean any harm, you know. I was just trying... Oh, no harm done, Sandra. We'll carry right along, and now we'll have you to help us up our productivity. Oh, no. You'll be a big help. Look, I don't know what you're up to, and I don't want to know, okay? You'll need a little practice, of course. You see, what we're up to is quite simple, really. This machine here looks quite complicated and is extremely so, I'm told. But running it is rather easy, just a matter of practice. What is that? It doesn't have a name as far as I know. It's made available to me from some colleagues out west. It's one of only three in existence, apparently. Anyway, they supply the machine. I provide the service. I I, I don't want to know about any of this. You know a lot already. Nothing about that thing. Well, let me tell you. It operates on some sort of laser principle drills a hole up through the roof of the mouth into the brain. Oh, my God. Then this little mechanism here drains off some fluids from various parts of the brain. Oh, my God, what do you do? The result goes into these vials and is sent off to my colleagues. And that's where the experimenting comes in. Refined, these fluids create a serum which can extend life and increase intelligence. In return... We get a lot of money and go for regular treatments in Honolulu. You're crazy. Oh, not at all. The whole system works quite well, except for the patients, of course. The process tends to destroy brain cells, leaves them lacking in emotion, and, shall we say, somewhat simpler than when they started. Someone will find out. We're always careful to pick people who are loners, where personality changes won't be too readily noticed. And with the aid of a very powerful hypnotic drug, none of them ever recall they've ever been here. Jeremy! He was your mistake, unfortunate. You would have been better as a willing assistant. What do you mean? This machine is quite versatile once you get the hang of it. It can pinpoint a number of parts of the brain. It can make you help us. No! No, you there. won't! I, I'm, I'm getting out of here! Where you the are! Gas, Donna. Don't move. You're not going anywhere. No! 
No. What are you? All right, I've got her. Don't, don't you? You just let put go this over me. your nose and breathe. Oh, oh, oh my God. I, I don't. I, I can't feel it. I. Oh. There. Good. Good. Now, Donna, let's see what we can do about getting our little lady here to be nice and helpful to us. There. Always like to keep the dental work up as well. Least I can do for them. Sandra, suction. There. Do you want me to turn the machine on now? Yes, please. But this time I'd like you to have a try at operating it. Think you can handle it? I don't know. But you'll try, won't you? Yes, I'll try. Good, good. Now, you've watched me do it a few times. Just do what I did. Right up through the roof of the mouth, you'll get used to the smell. Right through here? Uh, that's it. No, no, a little more to the right. You'll probably miss the first few times, but that's normal. Oh, that'll do in most of his motor controls, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry. You're bound to make a few mistakes at first. You just keep poking around and practicing until you get the feel of it. This gas is very effective. Jeremy won't feel a thing. If you have a little bridge work you'd like looked at, write to us. We'll pass along a referral. The Dentist was written by Bill Gray and directed in Vancouver by Don Kowalczyk. Starred Beth Kaplan as Sandra, Lee Taylor as Dr. Stewart, Terry Kelly played Sandra's husband, Jeremy, and Doris Chilcott was Evelyn. The old dental assistant was played by Nicola Cavendish, and in the role of Mr. Rogers, we heard William Samples. Sound engineers were Jerry Stanley and Chris Cutris, with sound effects by Jay Hyreen. Production assistant, Dagmar Kafanki. 